So welcome to Night Hacking Interviews at the QCon conference. Um, I am joined by Trisha Gee and Eva Bother G. How are you doing, Eva? Oh, she's she's playing. She's, she's having happy. a great time <laughs> with my demo for this evening, which will soon be destroyed. <laughs> yeah, very. It's it's kid safe. It's been. That's it's what been you say. You'll find out. Yeah. Well, y it's already been broken by Cassandra, as you can see there. <laughs> So I think she can open it and close it and try to destroy it. And then we'll have a good story at the, um, the presentation tonight. So how have you been doing? Good? Not bad, not bad. You know, busy, no sleep, that sort of thing. <laughs> Turns out that having a baby is a really good um, way of not worrying about jet lag anymore because you're permanently sleep deprived anyway. Yes, yes. So you, it's a good way to overcome fear of, of sleep deprivation. Just Absolutely. being in a constantly sleep deprived state. And you were also preparing a new talk today, you were saying. Yeah, so I gave it for the first time last week, and then I completely rewrote it for today, of course. And wow. um, that's not fraught with danger at all. <laughs> so it, it got to two minutes, 10 minutes from the end. I was like, right, so I have half of the talk left to give. So I'm just going to talk really fast. And then you're going to have to watch the video and slow it down. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, having too much content is always better than having too little content. So Absolutely. That's, that's a good situation to... Um, to be in. So what were you talking about in your, in your talk today? So I was doing refactoring to Java 8, because Java 9 is not out yet, so I can't do any Java 9 stuff. Java 8 is kind of, uh, you know, it's c sort of old news. But the reality is that actually most of us are working on code bases, which even if we're compiling against Java 8, we're not using a lot of the Java 8 idioms. Yep. So I wanted to sort of take a look at how we can, uh, is there an easy way to Java 8 eyes our code? And are there any benefits to doing that? And so we look at um, the automatic refactoring. We look at finding places where Lambda expressions might help us. And then we do a bunch of performance analysis over whether there's any benefits performance-wise to that. OK, that's pretty cool. I, I think you know, for most people, I, I usually poll people in my talks about whether they're on Java 8, Java 7, Java 9. No, not quite. Yeah. Um, and there's a surprising number of people who haven't upgraded to Java 8 yet. I think more people than when I did the same polls for Java for seven. 7. Yeah. But with Java 8, it's there's still a lot of people who are just upgrading now. So I think it's very relevant. I think so. I was a little bit worried because I thought maybe maybe mm. it's kind of old news. But it's, it's really not. And a lot of people in the talk were using the Java 8 compiler, but not using Java 8 idioms or Java 8 features. And that's okay. exactly so they just who it's upgraded to the new Java 8, gotten right. it working, passing test suites, but haven't actually refactored their code base. Right, exactly. And, and why should you refactor your code base? Because it's kind of, it is risky to change your code like that. So a, a lot of people will be like, well, we won't do it unless there's a compelling reason to do it. Yeah, so what were your findings for like performance and um, you know using some of the new features? So what I really wanted to do is take a look at some classic examples of, say, moving from anonymous classes to Lambda expressions, using some simple stream operations, using for each versus the for loop, yeah. and see if there were some nice rules you could apply. Like if you've got something that looks like this, the performance would be the same or better or worse. But it turns out it's really case by case basis. Mm -hmm. So if you have an expensive computation inside your for loop, it really doesn't matter whether you use streams or, or for loop. Um, and it depends a bit on how many items you're iterating over. It depends on so many different things. And some things where you think, well, the code is doing exactly the same thing, you get way worse performance in Java 8. Yeah. And sometimes you get way better performance. And so if it matters, you, you have you to do a test. test. It. Yeah. So test it case by case and Which see what really the performance sad, difference right? is. Which is really sad, right? Because you, whenever <laughs> anyone says, how, how, give me some guidelines, I'm like, you have to test your own case. I'm sorry. That's just the way it goes. Yeah, and I was chatting with Stuart about the performance intricacies with Lambdas. So he's, for those of you who don't know, Stuart Marks is one of the folks who did all the um, library changes for Lambdas. And he, he strongly encourages people to use the new features because it uses inner iteration rather than outer iteration, right. which is easier for them to optimize. Yeah. But then he also cautions people that um, initially you know, especially right after the release, but even now they're still working on optimizations. So future versions of Java, the code will hopefully improve performance and will be better performance in all cases, but they're still kind of working on performance tweaks in the JIT compiler to make sure that that actually happens. Right. And uh, the reality is in a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of code, certainly the code I was looking at, the, the loop is only iterating over like maybe a dozen items, maybe less than that. And so sometimes using using streams and for each for that, it's just a bit heavyweight. You just don't yeah. need it. So. 
Yep. So yeah, it depends, which is kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that's what they pay us for, right? They pay us to look at code and figure out if it's the right thing to do or not. Just not just to type stuff automatically or, or get the IDE to do our work for us. That's, that's, um, that's not really the point. Yeah, that I, I think that's good to know. So you you gave people examples of you know things to look for to refactor, but also some advice on how to test and make sure that you're actually getting the best performance out of your application rather than blindly accepting all the refactorings right. in the IDE and then killing your app performance. Right, and also uh, there's some tips for when you're refactoring things like this, you might you might need to be aware that when it looks this shape, you're you should probably performance test this because um, there might be some unknown implications. Like with um, with streams, you can collapse a number of different for loops into an individual one, which is mm -hmm. nice. But you can also do lots of chained operations where you're doing multiple operations and don't realize it. So when you collect it to a list and then you do a two array on the list, for example, um, that's not a single stream operation. It's actually two operations. So yeah, uh, yeah, no. So I was trying to point out some gotchas. Think about things this way. And yeah, I think whenever you sync things to collectors, that's actually a big, potentially inexpensive operation. Um, just iterating over it instead, or or going directly to um, trying to think. I had an example of this where um, you can instead of sending it to a collector, you could operate on it directly, um, right. which saved you some performance. Right, and I think that if you a lot of what we do when we put things in collectors is because we're kind of used to working with lists. Yeah. Instead of thinking, well, is there a way to shortcut this? Can I filter half of it out? Can I, can I map it directly to something I need rather than collect it into a list and then doing something Oh, I else? remember I was trying to go to an array and then I sent it to a list and then as an array right. where you could do arrays dot um, something. You can use that as a, as a um, method, method functional all right, I'm, I'm forgetting my terminology. But there's a method on the arrays class where you can actually directly turn it a, um, a stream into an array and bypass the Oh, collection. yeah, I forgot that. And actually, there's an, there's an example of me using a collector and then two array, yeah. um, which is exactly that. And I forgot that there was um, the, other, the other example. And, and that's the thing is that your tools will tell you you can refactor it this way, but sometimes you have to stop, look at it, and go, oh, but I remember there's this other method that might be better. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. So um, yeah, that sounds like it's very helpful to Java developers. So you planning to give that talk more times? So I'm hoping to give it at Java One. Oh, so hopefully. I definitely want to give it at Java One. I I submitted it to Java Zone as well, but I'm not sure if they if they'll say yes or not. So <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, the Java Zone conference is in Oslo, Norway, and um, they always produce great videos as and well. And the food's really good too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they have. Um, Ice cream and espresso and a really nice pavilion hall. You wanna you wanna go to Oslo, Norway, huh, Eva? Yeah, they Did have good food there. Ice cream, maybe, <laughs> maybe not ice cream yet. Yeah, so she's a, a future, future Java, Java champion, champion in training. We That's got this awesome. We got this top from DevOps UK last year <laughs> when when i um, when I was pregnant, so we had to show it off again. Um, now she's here. Yeah, that's very good. So thank you, Trisha, and thank you, Eva, for the interview here thank at you. QCon New York. You've been both great interviewees, lots of fun, and I look forward to seeing you at the Java One conference upcoming. Thank you for having me. All right, Cheers. thank you.